Hey guys, what's going on? I reviewed the TID Radio TDH3 a little while ago, and I started that review by being blunt. I just didn't like the form factor of the radio. I'm not a fan at all of compact radios. The size just, it simply doesn't work with the other gear that I carry and the way that I like to use it. So right off the bat, that was a major strike against it. Now, I kept testing it because the build quality of this stood out. This, this feels closer to a Yesu or a Kenwood than that of a Balfang, and that solidness matters in the field. So it also offered the useful receive features of being able to receive the 220 band as well as the air band, which made it handy for specific tasks, even if it never became my go-to radio. What we're getting into with this is the TDH3 Plus. TID Radio sent this to me to evaluate, so let's get into what changed and whether the upgrades they put into it really matter in the real world. So for this review, we're going to compare how the TID Radio TDH3 and the TDH3 Plus and kind of compare them across their hardware, their RF performance, their software and programming, the ergonomics of the radio, the battery, the real world features, and the operational use cases. So the TDH3 is gonna be kind of like the baseline. It is compact, it's rugged, it's budget friendly. The TDH3 Plus, it keeps the same physical platform but layers in modern connectivity, expanded programming paths, and a portable repeater mode that really changes how you can deploy this thing in the field. It's so probably one of the best places to start on this thing would just be to look at their hardware and their build. So both radios share that compact design with the chassis. They both have a rubberized perimeter and the IP resistant seams. Now the plus does show a marginally more refined screen. It's got a higher contrast, uh, and the button response is slightly faster. With the screens on these radios, I would say that's very important. The Plus compared to the standard, I think the Plus is definitely, it's the font's just a little bit larger, it's easier to read, so definitely a fan of that. And I think even another important comparison to make it to is to the, the DM32 UV. When you compare these screens, when I had these outside, I was doing some testing with these, I have to say that the TDH3 Plus blew the DM32 UV out of the water as far as trying to read the screen in bright sunlight. Neither of them was great compared to one of the Motorola's, but between these two, uh, it's hands down that the TDH3 Plus has the, the better screen on it. And even compared to the regular TDH3, you can tell that it definitely pushes it out. So. You know, a little bit of a, of a benefit. It's one of the things that on the lower tier radios you always kind of struggle with is being able to uh, find a screen that's easy to read. The feel on them is definitely solid, uh, definitely acceptable for field use. And as far as their durability, the shock tolerance on the Plus may have been slightly better just due to the internal shielding for the electronics near the Bluetooth and the web update circuitry, but I haven't had any issues with the regular H3 getting dropped or anything like that and having any issues with it. So they are both still pretty rugged for what they are. Now, as far as their RF performance goes, both on the transmit and the receive, they're basically nominally the same across both units. You can expect that one to five watt range, uh, you know, their low, medium and power steps that they have. As far as the modulation goes and the audio, I gotta say, both devices deliver clear audio. The Plus has improved audio processing when using the Bluetooth audio and its uh, speaker output is definitely cleaner at higher volumes. As far as the receiver sensitivity, it's comparable in both, but the Plus pulls ahead in crowded RF environments due to the updated front end filtering and the AGC tuning. So that's a, you know, again, it's just the Plus is just a little bit improved. As far as the selectivity and blocking, the plus shows improved rejection of strong off-channel signals, which is helpful if you're near repeaters or commercial transmitters. Some guys go hung up on, you know, spurious harmonics. Um, both are within the consumer ham class limits when calibrated. So you can confirm that uh, compliance with a bench analyzer if you're concerned about having those, you know, out-of-band emissions. Now, as far as the 
software programming updates go for the TDH3 standard. That supports, you know, PC programming via the Kenwood style cable and USB adapters, plus your Oddmaster app, whether it's on the mobile or your desktop. And it offers basic programming, but you're not going to do anything advanced through the Oddmaster system. As far as your firmware updates, they usually, usually require a cable and a local app. Now the TDH3 Plus, they added multiple programming channels, USB-C, Bluetooth, and a web-based firmware update path. The web updates remove the need for a specific desktop app and biggest thing here is they let, that allows field teams to update the radios from laptops or phones. As far as channel cloning and remote config, you can do that via Bluetooth and that is really practical for rapid deployments. For ease of use, the Plus makes cloning and multi-radio like fleet updates much faster. The TDH3 is fine for your single unit users, but slower for fleet ops. And that's where the Plus kind of addressed that and gave you an avenue to complete those tasks. Now we kind of get into one of the defining things of the Plus, and that's when we're talking about Bluetooth and audio. So first, for the TDH3 you know, standard, if it has it in it, the Bluetooth is going to be limited to basic programming or simple speaker output. Your headsets are often unsupported or unreliable. Now, with the TDH3 Plus, this is a full Bluetooth stack with low latency, push to talk support, headset pairing, and A2DP speaker use. The latency is low enough for normal voice comms, and you can verify your push to talk mapping for your Bluetooth PTT device. The Bluetooth also enables hands-free if you have your Vox um, set up to operate in that manner. So, you, you know, you could really use this as a hands-free device. But one point of note here is you should definitely lock down your radio once you get it, just so that it's not to, just to ensure the discoverability is off. That way you're avoiding anybody else trying to log onto it or causing interference or anything like that. Now, another defining feature or what probably could be the defining feature of this radio is the fact that the Plus can be configured as a portable repeater basic duplex or simplex repeater using proxy, using software parameters. And this enables short range extension of, you know, local nets without a dedicated repeater site. The practical use for this, it could be great for a temporary incident command post, um, especially if you have like a remote work site, or if you're just setting up an ad hoc mesh of handhelds. Things you can expect, I would say, you know, expect the coverage to be limited by a hand, it's a handheld transceiver. You're gonna have power issues, you're gonna have battery life issues. You could use external power uh, and you could put a better antenna on this very easily to help with that. But this is certainly not a substitute for a commercial repeater and you shouldn't go in you know, thinking that it could be. You gotta watch for heat, battery drain, and duplex isolation limits. You have to monitor duty cycles to avoid overheating uh, and you know, battery life and power management is gonna have to all be considered. Now, both of these radios use a 2,500 milliamp lithium ion battery pack. As far as your the real world endurance on the plus, that's going to depend on the use. So, for continuous receive, many you can get. Many people are saying you can get greater than 24 hours in ideal standby conditions with aggressive power saving. If you're doing some sort of mixed field ops with periodic transmissions, you can plan on eight to 12 hours depending on the transmission duty cycle. If it's in repeater mode. This is gonna have significantly higher drain and you can expect several hours of use, um, but you know, you're gonna to have to use external power if you're planning on doing it for a long shift. As far as the charging on the Plus goes, it does offer USB-C, which is kind of convenient. I wasn't really a fan of that in the past. I always thought I liked putting it into a dock, but the more I get accustomed to it, being able to just plug a USB-C in from virtually anywhere is really convenient, especially in the field. It does come with a proprietary dock, but it also does support USB-C charging. As far as the screen goes, the Plus definitely has clearer characters and a slightly faster menu response compared to the TDH3. Um, both have intuitive channel scan VFO mode, uh, and as far as you know, you can map out your buttons. The you can set all the channels on the side for defaults. They're all programmable hotkeys, but the keys are really small, so you can't definitely can't do it with gloves. It's almost hard to do it just with your regular fingers and try not to, you know, accidentally hit some of the other buttons. So, and again, that just comes back to 
a form factor and one of the many reasons as to why I'm not a big fan of a radio that's this small. Now, as far as the audio on these two radios, the Plus definitely has a louder and clearer speaker than compared to the regular TDH3, especially when you're using Bluetooth audio. The mic pickup, uh, the quality is similar, but the thing about the Plus is that it comes with this Bluetooth speaker mic, and I have to say, this thing, it sounds good. The mic gain on it is good. Super easy to use. Being in public safety, this is the first time I've gotten to use a Bluetooth mic that doesn't have a cord attached to it, and I think that is a huge advantage. This is also um, rechargeable via USB-C right on the side, so this was a really big feature as well, so I thought that was a very cool uh, advantage and plus to the H3+. Plus. Now, as far as range testing goes on these, I'm not gonna do a video uh, on the range testing just because these will never be my, my go-to radio, so I didn't put that much into it. But I did do some basic line of sight stuff with both of them over flat terrain, and both performed very similar. The, the Plus was maybe slightly better, and I can only think that that could be just due to, you know, the marginally improved front end of this. Now on some urban and building penetration stuff, the plus shows a better signal to noise ratio in congested RF areas, and I think it's just due to better filtering. Another really cool thing about the TDH3 Plus is per TD, per TID radio, they're saying that the plus supports text messaging between the two radios, just over analog, there's nothing digital in this, but it has some sort of uh, protocol in it that is allowing it to do text messaging, but you have to have another TDH3 Plus radio, which I don't, so I can't demo it or test it. I just wanted to relay that that is a feature that uh, TID Radio advertises that the Plus can deliver. So we mentioned about the battery cycling and how long it can last with the standby mode or if you're trying to cycle it. The best thing I can tell you is kind of like an, uh, on an endurance test, if you were going to transmit eight times in an hour and hold the transmit button down for an hour. On the TDH3, you could get about 10 to 12 hours. On the Plus, you're gonna get about nine to 11. And that's because the Bluetooth idle has a bit more of a drainage on the battery than not having anything Bluetooth hooked up to it. Now, as far as the repeater runtime, again, if you're just using the internal battery on the radio, you're gonna get about three to six hours depending on the duty cycle. And again, that's why I just recommend it. Try to get some sort of external 12 volt USB power if you're gonna plan on using it more than that, but the radio is going to heat up. So I don't know how much, you know, how long you can actually plan on doing that for. So here's my takeaway on this. On paper, the H3 Plus adds a lot over the standard H3, but the real win for me is how those features kind of translate to lightweight, practical use for in the field, and not so much for the tactical world or rescue operations, but for something like Backpacking and hiking, I value minimal weight, a low profile carry, and hands-free comms. And the Plus delivers on those. Clip the radio on your pack with the antenna, you know, kind of elevated above your head, pair the Bluetooth speaker mic to it, and you've got clear, hands-free voice ops without a mess of cords getting snagged on brush or your backpack harness or even your climbing harness, whatever, whatever it would be. And that alone makes routine tasks and tactical comms especially in the you know REMS world that I'm in or just in the hiking world or outdoorsy world, much more convenient. Where the Plus really changes the game is with that portable repeater capability. If your team or your group is strung out across multiple trails or you're arriving from different trailheads, a Plus configured as a temporary repeater, that can really you know bridge the gap without hauling a full repeater stack. It will not replace a site-grade repeater for long-term use, but for short missions or incidents or just for the minimalistic stuff of, hey, we're just going to keep this going until our group comes together. It gives you a lightweight, rapidly deployable link that will keep the whole team connected. So that's the thoughts on the TDH3+. Plus. If you guys are interested in getting this, I'm going to put an affiliate link. You know, I don't get many of those, but I'm going to put an affiliate link in the comments. If you are going to buy one, again, if you're getting it for the airband capability or the fact that it can do the Bluetooth speaker mode or the portable repeater. I would appreciate you buy for the link just to help the channel out. So hope you enjoyed this. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. Be safe. <laughs>